stop to these unfolding explosions and apparent terrorist attacks. The President addressed the nation a short time ago. Again, uh, I need to uh, uh, remind you, not just the two attacks on the World Trade Center, this was followed by an apparent deliberate terrorist attack on the Pentagon. The White House has been evacuated tonight. There's an explosion at the Pentagon and the President addressed the nation a short time ago. He is making his way to Washington, but here's what he had to say to the nation just a little while ago. Today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and I've ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the f and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. U.S. President George W. Bush. We're endeavoring to cross to our correspondent in New York, Michelle Stone, but as you can imagine, the scenes are quite chaotic and it's, it is uh, continually, continuing to be difficult to ascertain the communications. Let's cr cross back now to CNN for more breaking news. Out of, the, ...of the front tower now, and then about a half an hour later, just as uh, emergency crews were converging on the scene, as uh, eyewitnesses were gathering on the street corners, a second plane drove in too. And you can see that plane coming around the building right now in this tape. And there you can see the hit as it comes through what looked to me at least, and this is the first time I've seen that tape, come through the back side of the tower. I guess that would be the south side of the tower. And, and then the smoke and flame coming out the front side. Um, again, that was about a half hour after the first attack, which was at about 8.45. Look, you want to be careful here. We don't want to get too far ahead of this, but obviously this has all the appearances of an extraordinarily well-coordinated and devastating terrorist attack here in the United States. Uh, certainly nothing like it since Oklahoma City and nothing like it here in New York since the terrorist attack on the same World Trade Center buildings in February of 1993. Uh, at the Pentagon, a plane or a helicopter has crashed apparently as part of whatever this operation has been. And uh, is, uh, Jamie McIntyre is there. Jamie, what are you hearing? Just interrupting the coverage there for another piece of uh, late-breaking news. Middle Eastern Television is tonight confirming they have received a telephone call from a Palestinian group claiming responsibility. That's Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi I apologise, television in the Middle East claiming they received a telephone call from the Democratic Front of liber for the Liberation of Palestine, a group just calling themselves the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. So it does appear the continuing conflict in the Middle East may well have contributed to these apparent te terrorist attacks. What you're watching now, two pictures there, it does appear to be Washington DC. We can confirm mass evacuations across the city, the Pentagon, there has been an explosion and fireball above the Pentagon. The White House has been evacuated. The President is making his way there. This of course comes within about an hour from two explosions in New York City at the World Trade Center. Two planes apparently crashing into both towers. As yet, we cannot confirm how many people may be injured, exactly what is occurring right now in the streets of Manhattan, other than to confidently assume absolute pandema pandemonium and chaos. Emergency crews are rushing to the scene. The FBI has, is desperately trying to contain the situation. Aviation across the country has ground to a halt based on the suspicion that these planes may well have been hijacked and the only way that they can, t can contain the situation immediately is to cancel all takeoffs and landings to grind the entire aviation 
across the United States to a halt as the President is endeavouring to make his way to Washington to a secure bunker there. Air Force One is of course being cleared and may well be one of the few planes that can move in the United States. In terms of the Pentagon, I realise we're on New York right now, but in terms of the Pentagon, uh, eyewitnesses were saying they saw a helicopter circling the building moments before disappearing behind the building, hearing an, a loud explosion and then seeing a fireball erupt in the sky. In terms of the World Trade Centre and the vision you're seeing there now, eyewitness reports believe it was a kamikaze act from the pilot where he deliberately aligned himself. Goodness me, I'm sorry. You can see there the second tower, it does appear, may well have been collapsing. It does appear that... that it has collapsed. We're not sure whether it is the first or the second tower. M a major catastrophe in the United States. One of the towers of the World Trade Center has collapsed. This is a center that houses 40,000 employees on a daily basis. 150,000 employee people rather pass through that building. The Australian shopping center group Westfield own the shopping plaza downstairs. We are yet to confirm if any Australians have been caught caught up in this apparent terrorist attack. The United States President has confirmed deep suspicions that it is a terrorist attack and as I said Middle Eastern Television is confirming they have claimed some responsibility from a Middle Eastern group. Let's cross back now to CNN for all the details. Evacuated and the Treasury Department has been evacuated. Washington DC, the nation's capital, is exceptionally tense and uh, clearly taking steps as if it is virtually under siege here. We don't know specifically, as you've as you said, uh, what has taken place at the Pentagon, but this is very serious, striking at the heart of the national government, and as John King was explaining, Frank, the White House Frank, it's Aaron. I, I need to interrupt you for a second. Uh, again, there has been a second explosion uh, here in uh, Manhattan at the, at the Trade Center. We are getting reports that a part of the tower, the second tower, the one a, a bit further to the south of us, uh, has collapsed. We are checking on that. We are also told that the Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated. And what I can't tell you on that is whether there was something specific that happened there, whether there was an attack on that building yet. We have Michelle Stone, TENS correspondent, on the streets of New York at the moment. Michelle, describe the chaos if you can. Well, Sandra, you can probably hear it in the background. The streets have come to a standstill. There are rescue units and police everywhere, and all I'm seeing is hundreds and hundreds of New Yorkers and standing on the side of the street just absolutely immobilized by this tragedy. Just 60 seconds ago, I'm sure you've seen the pictures, the entire left tower just completely collapsed. I, there's people on their knees here, there's people praying, there's women hysterical. It's, it's, it's an incredible sight. It, unless you actually are here to see, you can't imagine just how horrifying the situation is. Michelle, describe for us, if you can, your proximity to the building. How far away are you from there? What, can you actually see the World Trade Center and any of the debris? How close are you to, to the scene of the incident? I'm about, I'm very close, Sandra. I'm about as close as you can get. I'm about a kilometre from the scene. Uh, I can see absolutely everything except, of course, the... Uh, the immediate aftermath on the ground. The police are not letting anybody close because there were reports that perhaps another plane was going to come in and finish off the job, so they're keeping us a long distance from there. Has the National Guard been brought in at all? I remember in, uh, in Atlanta when they believed that terrorist bombing had occurred, the National Guard was on the streets within minutes, it seemed. What's, uh, is that a similar situation there tonight? Or this morning, um, rather? Yeah, Sandra, it's, it's hard to tell. I'm only getting snippets when I, uh, you know, get into a cab. Or put the, there are literally dozens of cars stopped on the side of the road <laughs> with radios blaring and everybody's gathered around the cars to hear what the latest is. Michelle, we're told that there was absolutely no warning prior to these attacks, and yet on the back of the 1993 attack on the World Trade Center, I'm assuming the people of New York while they may well be shocked, aren't completely surprised. 
No, that's right. Um, in fact, I just spoke to a, a, a local here. He witnessed the second plane come in and uh, hit one of the towers, and he said that uh, it's to be expected, if you're the world superpower, that you're going to be a target of, of extreme terrorism like this. And he was actually quite matter-of-fact. Now, the gentleman might have been in shock, but that was his perspective. Michelle, we're told the president is attempting to make his way back to Washington to some sort of secure bunker. I'm not sure if you're aware, but the Pentagon, there has been an explosion there. The White House has been evacuated. In terms of New York City, the entire country has been ground to a halt. Aviation across the country has been paralysed. And I'm assuming on the streets it is, of course, no different. Um, I'm assuming mass evacuations are underway and uh, that's... That's really all you can tell us at this point. Are you seeing any, um, you know, sort of sense of uh, massive security other than things like the National Guard coming in? Are you, are you getting this sort of sense of terrorism really being at the hub of this in terms of what you're seeing? I think there's absolutely no doubt about that. There's also reports coming out of Chicago that they are evacuating Sears Tower there, which of course is the country's tallest building, and uh, various other institutions in that city. Uh, a real fear has gripped New York, and, and I think that these people standing around are just in a state of absolute disbelief. We, uh, the streets are completely shut down. You cannot get in or out of Manhattan. In fact, you cannot get down this end of Manhattan anymore. Um, all the airports are shut down, as you said. The place is a complete disaster area. Michelle, any idea at all on casualties? What are you seeing in terms of people leaving that area, in terms of the, the, the circumference of, of the blast and the impact? Um, so it's, it's, the circumference of the blast, is have, it, it, the, the effect of it is being felt at least three or four city blocks in terms of damage. I'm not gauging from anybody, any reports or anybody yet. The, num Just, uh, the numbers of casualties, but you must remember that this is a 110-storey complex and 40,000 people work there every day. And if you've already lost one tower, you, can, you know, it's easy to do the sums to determine how many casualties there are. The other thing that needs to be kept in mind here, Michelle, is that this first explosion occurred, or the plane crash, at 10 minutes to 9. A typical Tuesday morning in New York, the streets of New York, streets of Manhattan, would have been crowded. That's exactly right. And of course, remembering that the World Trade Center is down in the financial hub of Manhattan, uh, the New York Stock Exchange has been evacuated, and this is probably the busiest business district of the entire island. All right, Please Michelle, it does... Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It does appear we may have lost Michelle temporarily, so let's cross back now to CNN for the continuing coverage of this extraordinary story, an apparent terrorist bombing in two cities in the United States, New York and Washington, and one of the towers of the World Trade Center has collapsed. Both have been targeted by planes and the Pentagon. There has been an explosion. We will go to a break and we'll cross back to CNN straight after this. Three aircraft having been hijacked today. So we have at least because we've now had eyewitnesses to three de apparently deliberate uh, aerial assaults involving the aircraft themselves, two on the Trade Towers in New York City and one on the Pentagon itself, just described by Don Wright as a small two-engine commuter plane which came up from the south. And we now believe that three planes were hijacked, two of them from Boston, and one from somewhere else, we are not yet sure uh, precisely what's happened. Um, John, you're listening. Uh, Just to uh, clarify for people, John, who's, uh, who's uh, our, one of our leading reporters on crime, uh, knows New York City probably better than anybody in, in many news divisions. Uh, I cannot tell you where that happens. That's either a U.S. Uh, uh, Air Force or Navy aircraft, uh, fighter aircraft, uh, now on patrol in what we've described as the no-fly zone uh, over New York City today, lest there be one more attempt. John, go ahead. Uh, they've continued evacuations in the area now. They've, they're evacuating Battery Park City, which is a large apartment complex, uh, taking up many blocks across the street from the World Trade Center. And uh, they've evacuated the federal court buildings where the terrorism trials of Ramzi Youssef and others were held. Uh, anything that could be a symbolic target is now being emptied out in New York. New York is, is going into kind of a lockdown mode. 
I think you'll also see in Washington the same kind of air patrols have been uh, scrambled around uh, principal buildings there. Okay. We have on the phone one of those people who, who uh, makes his living analyzing terrorism. Um, Kyle Olson, do you hear me? Yes, I do. I, I, I wonder if on a day like this anybody wants to be thought of as an expert on terrorism. Um, be that as it may, and assuming that and knowing that much of the country is shocked at the uh, apparent breadth of this, are you? Well, you know, this is a, this is the, the kind of attack that uh, that has fallen more into Tom Clancy novels than into uh, into actual response planning. Um, having said that, we've been anticipating for a long time. We've wondered why it's been so relatively quiet. Uh, the, act, the suggestions of Osama bin Laden's involvement. What has he been doing since coal? Uh, other other groups out there with uh, with a, a real or imagined grudge against the United States. Uh, the nature of the event is shocking. The uh, the fact that it's happened is not. Thank you very much, Kyle. Really appreciate it, Kyle Olson. Yeah, one, uh, one quick thing. Yeah, go ahead. One quick thing. The, accus the suggestions that are floating around out there right now, there's apparently this claim from the, uh, from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Right. Um, very interesting to yes, know. If, if, this is, if this is legitimate, if this, is, if this claim stands up, this appears to be okay. the first time this group has targeted Americans. This group has primarily steered away from the more extreme end of the, of the violence scale. They focused less on suicide bombings, more on, uh, more on, on gun attacks and, and that sort of thing in the territories against Israelis. Well, if, if it, this it, holds it, up, this is, a different, this is a very different tactic. Well, it. if it is true, and of course the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine was very much involved in attacking aircraft in the 1970s, uh -huh. which carried Americans. So certainly let's accept your notion that it's a recent attack on, on Americans. Thank you, Kyle, very much. You bet. Um, uh, as, as Mr. Olson makes clear, there has been at least one claim, and those of us who cover this for a very long period of time are always suspicious of claims. Uh, people who cover international terrorism. I'm going to interrupt myself. Linda Douglas, our Capitol Hill correspondent, I think is on the phone, and if she's not, she already reports there has been an explosion of some kind at the Capitol. Is Linda Douglas on the telephone? Uh, let's get her on the phone as quickly as we have. She just reported a couple of minutes ago that the leaders of the Congress, uh, Senator Lott, Senator Daschle, the Republican and Democratic leaders uh, in the Senate, had been taken to some un or have been taken to some undisclosed, secure location. Um, our general assumption is that there's no panic involved in this. That somebody in the Capitol building, as someone in the Washington, in the White House has a book which says that when these things happen, here, Thomas, maybe you can confirm this for me, when these, these things happen, there are certain modalities which you behave, and as you see the hierarchy of the American political establishment, the military establishment being attacked, you want to protect the chain of command. Absolutely. The first thing they try to do is get everyone in secure positions so they can gather information and um, make decisions about what to do next. Uh, one of the things that law enforcement officials had been planning for is the notion of a multi-tiered attack. Uh, an attack occurring in multiple places simultaneously. Because one of the things they've talked about is that terrorists want to project more fear, as much fear as possible. And one of the ways you can do it is to have this notion that attacks are happening on multiple fronts. Yeah, well, and, and there, we've never seen anything like this before in the United States, of course. And, and in fact, not seen anything like this in my reckoning. I've been doing this for 30 some odd years. I don't recall any multitude of attack. We've had two or three, we've had two suicide bombers within a, in a short period of time in the Middle East. Uh, we had the two embassies uh, in Africa, uh, in Kenya and in Tanzania, the attack two summers ago in the United States. But the notion that uh, the terrorists, either an organization or organizations, plural, uh, should be able to mount a concerted effort against the United States in this way, causing, in this instance, so many casualties, in the, in the instance of the Trade Tower, certainly so many casualties, is, is going to astound people in the political and military and, and intelligence establishment. Absolutely. The notion that you could have multiple attacks like this, they had been planning for it, they had not seen it. Um, this is an extraordinary escalation, one that they were, they were predicting would happen, but no one would think that it would happen this quickly. Okay. John Miller? I think... Uh, uh, let me just interrupt. I sure. apologize again. We're now looking at a, a helicopter over the Pentagon. That makes perfect sense this morning. But given the fact that we're all sensitive to the presence of any aircraft, uh, that was a helicopter that just flew across the screen. That is... And, and as we had one, at least one eyewitness say this was an attack on the Pentagon from the south, he described it quite confidently as resembling a commuter 
aircraft, which is to say smaller than a small private aircraft and not as large as a commercial jet. It may have been a, a prop jet. Um, it may have been a jet, but it's a smaller version of the jets which so many people in so many middle-sized American cities are now accustomed to seeing. In terms of the realm of terrorism, this is going to be a real uh, first test, uh, literally by fire, for the Bush administration. You recall, after the embassy bombings in East Africa, uh, the Clinton administration uh, waited about 10 days and launched a missile attack against the camps of Osama bin Laden, who they felt confident at that time they could say was responsible for it, and who's since been charged in it. Uh, in this case, I think this ratchets up. Uh, Excuse me. This is the Pentagon we're looking at now, according to my uh, according to my monitor. And again, it is hard to, to grasp what part of the building. We do not know if they're in the courtyard or outside, but you can see that a fairly considerable amount of damage has been done. We do not know whether these are offices or storage areas. The Pentagon is full of uh, many thousands of people uh, every day. The Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, has been saying only yesterday and today that he wants to reduce the, uh, the bloatedness, as he put it, uh, as he alluded to it in the military and the bureaucracy. But this is the great home of the, of the military bureaucratic establishment. Um, John, before I come back to you, uh, Dennis Cross is on the phone. Dennis, do you hear me? Dennis Cross, do you hear me? Yes, I can, Peter. Dennis, I understand that you were in the World Trade Center when either this or these attacks occurred. Am yeah, I correct? That's, that's correct. It was, uh, I guess it was slightly before 9 o'clock, and uh, I work on the 36th floor in One World Trade Center. I work for in the insurance industry. Probably hundreds of people uh, in my industry uh, in both of these two buildings. And what was ha what happened? Um, as I was, uh, hey Dennis, just let me stop for a second. Um, somebody is trying another telephone on this line. Could they please not do that while we listen to Mr. Cross? Thanks. Go ahead, Mr. Cross. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, essentially, I was, uh, you know, sort of at my desk working, general office activity, and uh, felt an enormous. Uh, so it almost felt like an earthquake. Like I could literally feel and see things in the office moving and the floor moving. Um, immediately after what it was some sort of explosion or something uh, there was an enormous volume of debris and paper it almost looked like a dirty parade uh, all of this material just falling down I, I was looking out the uh, south side of the uh, of one world trade and uh, everybody in the office was kind of screaming kind of gathering in the middle and I went to the window and uh, I immediately saw one woman uh, who appeared to be motionless uh, laying on the roof of the of a, you know a lower building next to me. Um, at that point, everybody started to gather the things. They were mm -hmm. trying to evacuate people down the stairwell. And what, did the light? Did the electricity go out in the building? Uh, the lights flicker, flickered a couple of times, and then it was weird. It was kind of like there was there was one uh, one sort of rush, and then shortly after that, there was another one. I don't know if it was maybe the other tower or if there were uh, elevators in the inside. I guess. Uh, you know, sort of just dropping to the floor. Are, are you aware that, that, that one of the Twin Trade Towers has now collapsed on itself? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm about uh, probably five blocks from there on the corner of Greenwich and Warren. And, and as, we, as we looked at it on the screen here, Dennis, we could see uh, the smoke from this collapse just sweep the billow forward through the lower blocks of Manhattan. Did you have a sense of that? Completely. I was, uh, at that point, I'm, I'm a little bit northwest, it, certainly north maybe to the west side of... Uh, uh, Tower One, and I was trying to get to Broadway. Uh, my wife works on the other side of downtown here, uh, and I'm still trying to get there. But the smoke, I literally, I couldn't see. It was a wall of smoke, and if you were in it, you couldn't see. If you were out of it, you could just see the wall of smoke. It was, how how never difficult? Seen anything. I'm sorry for interrupting. How difficult was the evacuation? <clears throat> I'm how, sorry. Say that again, Peter. How difficult was was it to evacuate the building from at least from the 30? It was 110 stories in the building. It, I would say that it wasn't it wasn't extremely difficult. It was just uh, slow going down a somewhat narrow stairwell. With light, if there was any sort of uh, you know people who weren't able to move quickly, then it, it literally slowed down or stopped everybody. Um, I was on 36, so it wasn't too terrible. When I got down to you know the 15th or 12th floor or so, uh, there was water coming in from the doors, you know, kind of at our feet level. Uh, and then it just was a waterfall down all of the, continually down all of the stairs, probably, you know, in some cases, three, four inches deep. It's up, sirens and alarms are going off. 
Uh, and then people started to get a little frantic there. Dennis, thank you very much. Okay, I, sure. I really appreciate you calling in. You're Dennis very Krause, who, uh, who works, uh, on, or did work on the, on the 36th floor of the World Trade Center uh, in this particular tower, which is still standing. There's only one of the trade towers now standing, the other having collapsed on itself um, uh, not long ago. All of the federal office buildings in Washington have now been evacuated. All federal buildings in Washington have now been evacuated. All aircraft in the skies over the United States have been ordered to land at the nearest airport. Uh, all aircraft on the ground intending to go anywhere have been ordered not to take off uh, because the country, this is the Pentagon, because we've just seen a moment ago that at least one portion of one side or building at the Pentagon itself uh, has actually uh, collapsed. <clears throat> and as we warned you, the whole business of responsibility, claiming of and naming responsibility would be complicated. And now we've, uh, from, from the Middle East, a senior official from the, from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine has denied any uh, involvement, any connection to a double plane crash on the World Trade Center. It was, in fact, earlier on an anonymous caller who had called Abu Dhabi Television <clears throat> to say that the uh, the DFLP was responsible. So for today, we'll put uh, aside as best we can the uh, trying to understand who did it, just knowing uh, somebody who did it. Now, uh, one of the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center was, uh, as, we, as we said some while ago, American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston, Boston to Los Angeles. Uh, that has now been confirmed by the airline itself. Um, or at least by their spokesperson, Lori Bassani. Um, it was a Boeing 767. It would, under normal circumstances, if it were full, carry about 160 passengers, including two pilots, nine or ten crew, but we have no idea yet whether or not the plane was heavily loaded or not. Peter, a uh, big concern now from the scene that the Northwest mm -hmm. Tower, the one remaining standing, is, is leaning little. and uh, buckling in the, uh, in the Northwest corner. Um, they're moving back the mobilization areas and they're cordoning off the area in a much wider zone now because obviously they're, they are now concerned about the possibility of a second collapse. I, I'm still desperately confused, John, about what may have caused the building to, to collapse. Um, As you <clears> watch <throat> the videotape, it appeared to buckle from the middle, from the point of <clears throat> impact and, um, and collapse, which... Uh, not, you know, with no background in architecture. I don't know about the structural vulnerability, but as you, as you see, debris just starts to, to peel fall, away. then it cracks, and then it just goes straight down. And now uh, they say that the, the other tower is leaning. Um, if you look at some of the pictures, it appears to be on a slight angle uh, to the right. They, uh, they say the fire is also spreading downward now through the tower. And I, I think there's a real decision to make there. I have not been able to, to hear whether they're keeping people in there to fight that fire or they're just leaving it empty to let the fire burn itself out because they're going to have a real problem with people in there if it's in jeopardy. Okay, uh, that's Peter Jennings of ABC America just carrying us through this uh, tragedy that's unfolding across the United States. It's a major terrorist alert. It's so far, it's, uh, it's struck at two major cities, New York and Washington. And standing by in Los Angeles is our senior correspondent there, Robert Penfold. Robert, uh, obviously, um, Los Angeles must be bracing itself for a possible terrorist attack there. That's right, Jim. At the, at the moment, uh, all the airlines here, or the airports here, have been closed down. And what we're trying to do at the moment is find out really whether or not those airports might be opened a little later today. But the situation is at the moment, airports right across the United States have been closed, and people now have been warned, really, that they should not go near airports or near government buildings. Well, Peter Jennings made the, the comment that uh, it, it, not since Pearl Harbor has there been such an attack on the United States. Now, is that exaggerating the situation? It's certainly not from our uh, viewpoint over here. Well, Jim, certainly not. At the moment, the place really feels as though it is under attack because what we are hearing here in the United States at the moment, that they have no idea where the attack is coming from. There have been some claims of responsibility, but at this stage, they are unsure where the attack is coming from and what will be hit next. So, of course, everyone is under extreme pressure to find out what is going on, uh, where the attack is coming from, and 
Of course, as you can see from the uh, television sets here, it's just a continuing disaster here in the United States. Yes, the last major attack was uh, in Oklahoma City, and uh, even though there is a, um, a splinter Palestinian group uh, claiming responsibility, uh, the name Osama bin Laden is being mentioned, and of course he was the uh, res one res uh, allegedly responsible for the bombings in Kenya and Tanzania that um, decimated the U.S. embassies there. Have you got any more information on that? Well, there has been a claim of responsibility. Um, the, the group calling it a P, PFLP, uh, they have claimed responsibility out of Jordan, I understand. But no, at this stage we are still waiting to see whether or not there might be more claims of responsibility. And of course, you have to be careful at this stage too because uh, phone calls are coming into all the authorities all over the United States now from various splinter groups, perhaps claiming responsibility, wanting to be part of all of this as well. So the authorities would not accept the fact that the PFLP, as they're calling themselves, might be the ones responsible. They will in fact continue to monitor the situation and it's much too early to tell. Well, where is President Bush at the moment and what precautions are being taken for him? Well, he at the moment has been put now in a, a secure area. The White House also has been evacuated. All major buildings in the United States now have, been, have also been evacuated. Uh, here on the west coast as well in the United States, people are being told not to go to work, not to go near airports, not to go near government buildings. Uh, the President himself is in what they call a lockdown situation and um, it's more than likely that nobody will be saying where he is for the time being until they sort out this, this extraordinary disaster. Well, while we're talking, we have uh, pictures of the World Trade Center and the remaining tower. If we could just see those now, um, the, you'll see at the background there that that is the, 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 the second tower actually collapsing. What happened was that the second plane crashed into that and there was such an Im immense inferno at the top that that weakened the structure of the building and that forced its collapse. Now, the horrifying picture we're seeing is that there were obviously scores, if not hundreds, hundreds of office workers in that building who were unable to escape. Now, Robert, I guess there, there are fears now that uh, that remaining World Tower Centre, uh, the building there, that may collapse as well. Yes, Jim, that's the real worry, of course, and, and not to mention the fact that people were rescue workers and others were all there trying to fight this blaze as well when this second tower collapsed. Now, you have to go to New York and you have to stand next to this World Trade Center.